Conservative Christian education is surging in the United States and Europe. That's right. You know, in the midst of an extremely depressing situation here in the United States, I'd like to cheer you up with some wonderful news about an educational renewal that is indeed sweeping America and Europe. In this video, we're going to take a look at the explosion of a conservative educational renewal that's going on all around us, precisely why this educational renewal is happening and why it promises to be only just beginning. You are not going to want to miss this. Before we begin, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. Let's keep our lights on here. And that's the maker of this awesome motion detector, Ultra Bright Solar Nightlight. You can install it anywhere because it's wireless and you never need to worry about buying batteries because it's solar powered with a high powered battery storage pack. It's equipped with motion detectors and it becomes an entertainment light for the patio and for the barbecue with just a, a simple click of the button. And it's motion detectors. They offer effective deterrence against burglars. And best of all, you know, you don't have to spend a fortune for any of it. If you click on the link below right now, you'll save 52% off as well as free shipping. So we'll could be better don't wait click on that link below or visit nightsolarlight.com and bring its light to the dark spaces in your home today all right gang i think we can all use some cheering up here and we certainly do have a number of wonderful conservative developments going on all around us if we have but the eyes to see it. And one of those developments is the extraordinary rise of conservative Christian education that's been going on, not just here in the States, but in many parts of Europe as well. Now, ironically, the pandemic has helped with this and that we've seen a massive rise in homeschooling throughout the globe, but particularly here in the United States and in Europe. And that's given parents an opportunity to actually revamp their children's curriculum to a far more conservative and traditionalist curriculum. The numbers really are actually pretty astonishing. 60% of parents say they're likely to pursue at-home learning options for the foreseeable future. In the state of Vermont, homeschooling applications have risen by 75% from last year. In Nebraska, filings are up 21%. According to the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, we're seeing nothing less than a 500% increase in homeschooled students as of this year. Absolutely stunning. And in the process, there are now articles that are being written, although not necessarily from a complementary or a supportive perspective, but there are articles being written on a surge in the use of Christian curriculum in homeschooling. But in many respects, this COVID-inspired surge is really just the latest in the trend that we've been seeing with families returning, as it were, to a more traditional education. We like to talk about this phenomenon that's going on throughout the world known as re-traditionalization. And while certainly a bit of a cumbersome word, it's actually a rather simple and indeed profound concept. In the face of threats to a sense of identity, place, and security so often posed by globalization, Populations tend to reassert historic identity and security markers, religion, custom, tradition, as mechanisms of resistance against secular globalization's anti-cultural, anti-traditional dynamics. Scholars are increasingly noting that as people feel more vulnerable and experience existential anxiety, it's not uncommon for them to assert their customs, tradition, culture, language, and even ethnicity as bulwarks against threats to their sense of existential security. And as such, we're beginning to see education going through a process of re-traditionalization all over the world. And that includes places like India and Turkey. They're going back to their more Hindu and Islamic-based curriculum, respectively. But we're seeing it particularly here in the United States with the rise of what's called classical education, which focuses on fostering wisdom and virtue in students through encountering the true, the good, and the beautiful, particularly in the great books and great music and great art. According to the Association of Classical Christian Schools membership statistics, there were only 10 classical schools in the nation back in 1994. Today, there are over 234. Since 2002, student enrollment in classical schools has more than doubled from 17,000 nationwide to 41,000. And these are just ACCS-affiliated schools. There are estimates that classical Christian schools now number upwards of over 500 in the nation. We're also seeing among Catholic schools a mass shift towards rediscovering anew the ancient or traditional 
way of approaching education. A recent example involves an entire diocese of schools in Michigan who've rejected Common Core by returning to a distinctively Catholic liberal arts education. Moreover, we're seeing the development of networks and organizations such as the Institute for Catholic Liberal Education and annual conferences that are providing the professional development necessary for a vibrant faculty and administration. The charter school movement as well, which now represents upwards of 10 percent of publicly funded schools, it's becoming fertile ground for a classical educational renewal. The Great Hearts Academies operates currently 25 public charter schools in Arizona and Texas, which together enroll 13,000 students with another 13,000 on their waiting list. The Barney Initiative of Hillsdale College has the second largest network of public classical schools, serving over 6,000 students spanning seven states. Altogether, the total number of classical charter schools may be upwards of 150 in the nation. But it's not just here in the United States. More and more nations in Europe are turning back to a thoroughly classical educational renewal. But first, of course, we're still all reeling from what happened yesterday in our nation's capital. And I want to invite you to a live online Q&A that I'm holding tonight, January 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, to which you're invited. We hold these live Q&As every week, and they're exclusive for our Insiders Club members. And if you're not a part of my Insiders Club, all you need to do is click on that link down below in the pinned comments section, and you can sign up. And as a special incentive, we're going to give you uh, your first week absolutely free. That's right. We're going to give you a free one-week trial so that you can be a part of the Q&A tonight and ask me your questions. Look, I, I want to help you make sense of what's going on with the loss of the White House and the loss of the Senate in such a way that will help you to think better so that you can feel better. So make sure to click on that link below and become an Insiders member with your first week absolutely free. And I'll see you tonight, Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for our live Q&A. All right, so examples of retraditionalized education actually abound in Europe. The Republic of Georgia has been returning to an Eastern Orthodox-based curriculum for their public schools. We have to remember that the Orthodox Church has been functioning in Georgia, actually similar to the way it's functioned in post-Soviet Russia, which is it's filling the moral and cultural vacuum left by the collapse of communism. So the church actually remains extremely popular in Georgia. In fact, surveys consistently show that the church is the single most trusted social institution in Georgia. As such, the Orthodox Church has been instrumental in bringing Christianity back to the public school system. We're also seeing, seeing something similar going on in Russia. Uh, back in 2013, President Putin signed a new law which mandated the study of religion for all Russian students as, as a measure that actually goes back to 2006, when localities throughout Russia began mandating Russian Orthodox teaching in their public schools, including its traditions, its liturgy, and its historic figures. The New York Times actually featured a fairly recent article documenting the new curriculum offered in many of Russia's public schools that teaches the basics of the Orthodox faith as part of what Russians are considering to be a truly educated person in the post-Soviet era. In fact, you may not know this, but Russia actually has the third highest homeschooling population in the world. Homeschooling is absolutely flourishing throughout the nation. Estimates are that upwards of 100,000 Russian children are currently being homeschooled. And finally, the nation of Hungary under Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Uh, Hungary's been converting many of their public schools into church-operated schools. And the conservation rate, or the con I should, yeah, cons conversion rate, I should say, has been pretty dramatic. Back in 2010, there were 570 church-operated schools. Today, that number has nearly doubled to over 1,300. In 2010, there were just over 112,000 students attending parochial schools. Today, that number has reached nearly 210,000. Keep in mind, this is in a nation where the total population is less than 10 million. So it's pretty extraordinary. In fact, there were reports that there were some villages in Hungary that only have a Christian school. There's no public school option. So there you have it. An amazing educational renewal surging in the States and in Europe in the midst of our collective disappointment here and disillusionment in the United States, we don't want to lose sight of the wonderful conservative developments that are indeed happening all around us if we but have the eyes to see. 
Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And you'll definitely want to check out my latest video. I just uploaded it on whether or not it's time to consider forming a viable third party. I think you're going to find it very informative and very proactive. You're not going to want to miss it. So make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.